Thank you for inviting me here. My name is Piet Boerenveen. I'm managing the Estonian Food Bank. Um, together with my neighbor uh, four years ago, when the crisis uh, was very deep in Estonia, we thought, why is there no food bank in Estonia? In, in uh, the Netherlands, for example, uh, there are 135 food banks. In, in Germany, there are 800 food banks. Uh, in Estonia, there was not one food bank. Um, f food bank is just collecting food, in, in general, collecting food that is thrown away by, uh, by supermarkets and producers, which, which uh, and it's still edible food. It's, it's controlled by people and then just uh, distributed to people living in poverty. Just to show you a little bit about the problem in Estonia, this is the, the road from Tallinn to Luhama, from the northwest to the southeast of Estonia. This road is 288 kilometers long. It's the longest road in Estonia. And if you fill this road with trucks, one truck is 16.5 meter. If you fill this road with trucks, in the end you will have a little bit less than 15,000 trucks. And this is just the amount what uh, producers in Estonia throw away on food. I don't know if you can see it in the back, it's, it's probably very hard to see. Um, so this is, this is Estonia. 355,000 ton of food. When I saw it the first time, I thought it was kilo. That's already a lot, but it's, it's not kilo, it's ton. So tiny Estonia, 1.3 million people, throw away 355,000 tons of food. This is only manufacturing, households, and restaurants, or, or, or the other sectors. This is w without agriculture. So if, if you would include agriculture, the amount would be much bigger. Because we, as a food bank, we very often ask from, from supermarkets and, and producers, uh, uh, do, do you throw away any food? And very often they say, no, we do not throw away anything, or we throw away very little. But if you, if you see these figures, uh, the, the reality is a little bit different. Um, this, this research was done by the European Commission, so should be a reliable source. But of course, um, Estonian Association of Food Producers, they say these, these numbers are not correct. And maybe, maybe the manufacturers here, uh, maybe for Estonia, th this is a little bit too high. But even, now, nah, okay, if you, if you look to the total amount, 355,000 ton, and then to the total European Union, 89,000, 89 million tons of food in one year. Um, that's per person, 260 kilos per year. Uh, that's for Estonia. Um, and Estonia has per capita the fourth highest amount of food is being thrown away. And that's because According to this report, uh, food producers in Estonia work very inefficient. They throw away 21% of their production, which is the highest in Europe. So on average, Estonian food producers throw away 21% of production. Uh, this, this total amount, let's say uh, 90 million ton, it's, it's around 50% of food that is produced in Europe is being thrown away. It's quite a uh, big amount. <laughs> um, so in, st in, in Europe, 179 kilo of food per person is being thrown away in a year, while at the same time in the European Union, 17, 79 million people live below the poverty line, and 16 million people are dependent on food aid. 
if if the the the, uh, the way at the moment the, the the amount of food which is being thrown away if it goes on like this in the year 2020 the amount will be one, 126 million ton and this this research was done two, two years ago by uh, by the European Union European Commission and it was uh, quite shocking uh, the people in Brussels themselves were really shocked by this number and for example in two weeks uh, in Brussels there will be a meeting with NGOs all, all kind of NGOs are invited to, to think on uh, what to do about reduction of uh, waste of food and food losses. So even, um, now here you can see the numbers, probably in the end you cannot see it, but <laughs> um, of course uh, food producing countries as, as the Netherlands and, and Denmark, they, they have very big amount of uh, food what they throw away but uh, as I said even very small Estonia if compared with the rest of Europe it's, it's a very big amount 355,000 ton um, so isn't this absurd so really huge amounts of food being thrown away in Estonia according to the report it's, it's um, about 1,000 ton per day which is every day it's already more than 40 big trucks if, if you take the biggest truck uh, lorry you can find uh, in this truck goes uh, 24 ton maximum so every day 40 trucks of food are just being thrown away while at the same time in Estonia uh, many people li live in deep poverty according to Tervis Arangu Institute I think also here present Health Development Institute 16% uh, of the children in Estonia go to bed with an empty stomach. Some, some of them only uh, not very often and some of them very often. Some children in school, they faint because uh, at home they did not get any breakfast or uh, maybe even not even a, a dinner the night before. Here are some, uh, some information about poverty in Estonia. So 18% lives below the poverty level. According to Estonian uh, children, ombudsman, uh, 45,000 children li live in absolute poverty, 63,000 children live in absolute poverty or in the risk of poverty. That's every fourth child in Estonia. If, if you do not have any income for whatever reason, the state gives you social benefit, which is uh, 77 euro. But the Estonian statistical office made um, some kind of calculation. The, the amount of food what a people, uh, what a person needs to eat every month, ne needs to buy in a shop, that's, it co will cost him at least 85 euro. So how can it be possible that the state gives 77 euro to a person, but this, this person needs to eat at least uh, for 85 euro? Uh, then child support is only 19 euro per month. And according, as we think, the food bank, at least 100,000 people do not have enough money uh, to eat enough, to eat healthy, or at the end of the month maybe they, they don't eat anything or they only eat macaroni and nothing more, which is not sufficient for a person. Uh, then in Estonia, 6 to 8 percent of the people uh, do not have uh, health care insurance. Minimum salary is only 290 euro. It's gross. Uh, I don't understand how a person can can live f from this amount. If you, if you look to the prices in Estonia, it's it's amazing. The price of electricity will go up within a few months with 30 percent or more. On. Then average pension is is uh, 304 euro. Then. Um, medicines in Estonia are the most expensive of all countries in Europe. So on average, a person has to pay himself 43% uh, of, of medicine, the own contribution. Um, and in many families, children only in the school, they get a warm meal or a proper healthy meal because at home there's no money, there's no food. 
And then uh, Estonia can be very proud that the state debt is very low, but the debt of private people or families is, is among the highest in Europe. So that, that was why we established the food bank. So on the one side, huge amount of food just being thrown away. On the other side, huge amount of people um, living in poverty. Uh, now the concept of food bank, it's, it's, uh, it's already 40 years old. The, f the first food bank was established in 1967 in the United States, in Phoenix, Arizona. Then in the, in, in the 1960s and 70s, food banks were established in, in southern Europe, uh, France, in Spain, in Italy. And now the concept moved to, to the east of Europe and more to the north. At the moment, they also food banks in, in Norway, Sweden, Finland, now Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia too. So it's, it's, it's in fact, it's a very uh, simple uh, business model. Just fight waste of food and try to collect as much food as possible, uh, control it and distribute it to people who are hungry. Um, we started uh, this idea uh, something like four years ago, but in the beginning it was very difficult to get to get a warehouse, to get financial support, to get uh, volunteers, just to get the whole thing running. So for, for two years we were um, yeah, just looking at, at supporters. And then finally we started in uh, March 2010, and then the whole thing went very fast. Uh, we got support from Swedbank, we got support from Open Estonia Foundation, from uh, Netherlands, Estonian Netherlands Charity Foundation. So we opened in March 2010. And then within one month, there were, we already had a food bank also in Tartu. And then half year later also in Narva, Jurg, Virak, Vervilje and Ipernu. Last year in Pulva and Absolu. And this year also in Jerva. Maar. So now we have 10 food banks. And uh, um, also an office in Mardu. So we have 11 points where every week we distribute food to people living in poverty. Then uh, who gives us food? Now, every week we get, we get food from uh, the big Estonian supermarkets, except for Selver. They do not want to give us. Uh, and then the, the main wholesale firms who are dealing with, with fresh food uh, and also all kind of other products. And then also with the, the big producers. Uh, then every week some, some farmers uh, bring us 500 kilo of potatoes or they ask us to come to them to pick up potatoes or apples or whatever. Also private people give us food. And then we got a lot of food from the European Union food program. Then why do firms donate food? Uh, First reason is they want to do something good. So sometimes they give us, let's say, totally new or, or fresh uh, good food. Then another reason is if you have a big firm and if you have a big warehouse, uh, very often, by coincidence, firm finds out there is some food standing somewhere in the corner and uh, this best before is already nearby or sometimes already even over. And for them, it's impossible of, or very hard to sell. Of course, you, you, can, you can dump it in the market. You can, you can sell it for a very low price, but uh, very uh, often, let's say, quality firms do not want to dump the, their products very cheap to sell it on the market. And, uh, so for them, it's uh, that two alternative, just throw it away or, or, or give it to charity organizations. Um, one kind of rule, it's some kind of uh, rule of thumb that big supermarkets, if, if you have, for example, uh, lemonade and, and the shelf life is, is one year, you, so you can keep the lemonade for one year, and if, if one third of this time is over, the supermarket 
does not want to have it in his shop at all. So they, they, don't, they, they don't want to buy it from, from the producers. So producers, if they produce something, for example, with a shelf life of one year, uh, very quickly already, let's say the first, or, or the, the first two months they have to sell it. And if they are not able to sell it, they already have a problem with selling it. Maybe a small shop um, or, the, or the market, they want to have it, but the, the big supermarkets, they do not want to have it anymore. Now, very often uh, the package, packages are damaged, um, mistake on the label, the wrong label. Um, for example, if you have uh, one liter of, of lemonade and there's only uh, 900 cc inside, in fact, uh, the, the supermarkets and the producers are not allowed to sell it, so they can put on a new label or whatever, uh, but in the end it's too complicated and uh, often they just throw it away if, if, if the content is, is too much or too little. The content is, is different than the label, so sometimes they put in by mistake uh, a little bit too much sugar or, or too, too few um, berries or whatever, so there can be all kinds of problems. And with, for example, with potatoes, potatoes can be too small or too big, so supermarkets uh, do not want to have them. They, they only want to have, let's say, the standard potatoes. If the bananas are too brown, if the, the cheese has a wrong shape, if the carrots are bent or whatever, there can be really many reasons why supermarkets do not want to have it, or, or just producers do not want to sell it. Um, in Tallinn, we give every week to 200 families uh, food in, in a big uh, box, plastic crates like this. Uh, in Mardu, to 40 families, and we give around one third of our food goes directly to, to families, and about two thirds of our food goes to 30 charity organizations in, in Tallinn and in the whole of Harjumar. And that's only f about the Tallinn Food Bank, but all over Estonia we give food to, to more than 1,200 families every week. And all this work is done uh, for 90%, it's done by volunteers. This is just one example of uh, the food we give to, to a family. We always have uh, dark bread, we always have white bread, there's always some fruits and vegetables, <coughs> often cookies, uh, tea, sometimes coffee, some candy, well, just what a, a person needs for, uh, it's, it's not enough for one week, but maybe for a few days it's, it's enough. Here you can see the, um, the volunteers packing the boxes. So all the, the, the boxes come in from, from the producers. The volunteers uh, check if, if the food is uh, still edible, if, it's, if the quality is okay. Uh, then they put it in the boxes. Uh, something about waste of food. So uh, in Denmark, there's a very famous organization working. Um, they, they think that 2.5 billion euro yearly uh, f food is being thrown away. And in the UK, it's 14 <coughs> bi billion pounds, 18 million tons. In the Netherlands, um, firms throw away 2.4 billion euro worth of food, households 2 billion worth of food. And uh, only the, the energy uh, it w which was needed to produce this food is, is already gigantic. Then in the Netherlands was research done. Then uh, you can see the age of people, like what they throw away. It's mostly young people that throw away food. Very often, let's say, elderly people who have <laughs> um, they've lived during the war, during hard times, and for, for them it's much more difficult to throw away food. And I think old people um, maybe use their uh, eyes and uh, nose and uh, mouth more to, to taste the food and they don't uh, only look to the date of the, the best before and they, they know that if, it's, uh, if it smells good maybe you can still eat it but many young people think if the best before is over the food is, is uh, unhealthy or dangerous and they throw it away. Um, the food bank in the in, in England 
UK, they, they get a lot of food from, from producers. Because in England, it's, it's very expensive to, to bring your food to the, to the landfill. It costs you 90 pounds per ton. So firms are very happy to, to give the food to the food bank. Uh, and they even give 30 pounds per ton on top of that. So the, the English food banks, they live very well. They get a lot of food and they get a lot of money. Then uh, the, the thing about food safety, yeah? um, I think the Estonian uh, food authorities can, can do a big job and inform people much more about food safety because many people just don't know much about food safety. Uh, in, in the research which was done, uh, it came out that smoking or overweight is a much bigger risk for your health than unsafe food. So the, 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 the risk of food safety, or the whole issue of food safety, maybe, maybe it gets too much attention, or maybe people are too, too afraid of, of uh, eating something which might uh, get, give, give them some problems then um, many people just don't, do not know the difference between best before and to be used by. Best before uh, is just dry food, it's uh, food what you, what you can keep for a long time. Uh, and even if the best before date is over, it's if very often it's no risk, uh, it's, it's not dangerous, it's not unhealthy if you eat it. It's just uh, the best before uh, the date is just a guarantee for taste and and color and quality and after this date maybe the color or the quality might be become a little bit less but it it, it will not be become uh, really dangerous or unhealthy the other thing is to be used by of course that's things like meat and this this uh, can be of course really dangerous so many people just do not know the differences um, this is also hard to see uh, it's, um, we translated from the Dutch food authorities guidelines on uh, how you can use food that is over the best before. And we translated the guidelines in the Estonian language. And uh, we had a lot of discussions with the Estonian food authorities because they said that, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> maybe you can make up a nice story, but uh, why should we believe this? And then. Um, we said, yeah, but please look at the, the website of the D Dutch food authorities. And it's all according to EU uh, regulation. And here is exactly written like, um, nah, um, uh, cookies or juice or, or lemonade, all the, all the things which you can keep for a long time. Like, in fact, like how long you can still use it after the best before. And these guidelines are in the Netherlands used by by charity organizations, by food producers, by supermarkets, and in this way, you can still really um, distribute a lot of food uh, to, to people living in poverty. While so far in Estonia, it is very hard. The F Estonian Food Authority said this is not allowed. Um, so in fact, we're still in a, in a discussion often with Estonian Food Authority, but in my opinion, it would be the best if the Estonian Food Authorities would give out similar guidelines uh, so that uh, supermarkets and producers uh, know when they can give something and that charity organizations know when they can give something uh, or still use it and give it to people living in poverty. Um, now my experience so far in Estonia is that, <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the last uh, slide, um, in fact, in Western Europe, it's, it's easier for food banks to operate because they get a lot of, uh, if, if supermarkets or producers give food to charity organizations, they can get tax incentives. In Estonia, there's no tax incentive at all. Then, um, as I just showed you, in, in the Netherlands, the Netherlands is already 50 year member of European Union. It's all according to EU laws. But in the Netherlands still, it's, it's easier to um, maybe food laws are not so strict and, and they are clearer than in Estonia. In Estonia, many laws are not very clear and if, if a law is not very clear, then uh, 
een producer of supermarket uh, is afraid to, to donate. They are afraid of scandals and problems, so they just throw it away. Um, then in, in the, maybe in Estonia there's also not, not so much pressure on producers and supermarkets. Uh, so they do not think so much about ethics, so they just throw away the food. And then in Estonia, just waste disposal is, is relatively cheap compared with Western Europe. So this was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And we still have time for one or two quick questions. Any questions? Over there. Hi, I'm Marie Schreier from uh, Piltama Felix, a food produ producer. And I have actually two questions and one comment. Uh, the questions are, uh, what is the definition of food and uh, thrown away in your presentation? Uh, what do you mean by food? Like, is it like the end product, or what exactly do you mean? And also, what do you mean by thrown away? Do you mean that it goes to the uh, landfills, to the dumpsters, or you also mean the food that goes to uh, third organizations? Um, now, as, as, a, as a food bank, we mean with food just what, what, what we can give to other charity organizations or to to people living in poverty, so something which, which, what they can eat. So it should be eatable by, by people. Um, and then waste, that can be, that go to the landfill, but very often bread or, or milk products, they go to, to the pigs or to the cows. Um, in Estonia, there's, there's a big uh, milk processing plant, and they, they produce yogurt, and every day, they, they have seven times per day a shift in taste. So for, for a few hours they produce uh, strawberry yogurt and then they shift to banana yogurt. But, but every time they shift from one taste to the other. Um, in the pipes there's still 50 kilo of yogurt, which is the taste is somewhere in between. This is seven times per day. Uh, so in the end this is something like, I think 130,000 kilo per year. You know, just it's it's a, a yogurt and it's not up to any standard. But is it and it goes to the pigs. Away? Sorry. Is it thrown away or it go, it's no? It goes to the pigs. Okay. But but uh, everybody knows this is very good quality yogurt. And what is the problem of of, of giving it to charity organisations? But uh, in Estonia, so far, this is is, is uh, very complicated or it's just not allowed. And I know, for example, in in Hungary that uh, Danone they give it to the food banks, so all the yogurts where the taste is somewhere in between. And the, Sto the Hungarian food bank, they get two million pieces or cups of yogurt every year, only from, from the owner. So the, the amounts of food just being thrown away because it's not up to, to really the standards. Uh, now this is just one example, but uh, there the are many examples. I think you have the same uh, kind of examples in uh, Pilsen and Felix that you <laughs> no, we don't have similar samples, but, uh, but I also wanted to give a comment on uh, the data that you presented on your second slide, that you said that 38,000 uh, tons of uh, food is thrown away in Estonia each year, and also that 21% of uh, food that's produced in uh, food producers uh, uh, is thrown away. So I made a quick calculation. Uh, based on the, the quantity of uh, uh, products that Pilsma Felix makes every year, and then I divided and, and uh, I got to the result that according to that data, uh, uh, we should uh, have three trucks every week full of uh, food or food products not fit for human consumption. But this is not true. Like this is far, very far from from what it actually is. So I don't know uh, how it is with other food producers, but uh, but I don't think that there are too many food producers can, who can actually afford to do it. Yeah. So that was my comment. That I I really think that this European data uh, was not very accurate. Now it's it's this study made by the European Commission, 
and and I, I agree with you. We asked the Estonian AST Toido lead, and uh, and I asked some other food producers, and they all said this is this is uh, this is not uh, realistic. Uh, it's it's some kind of a joke. Uh, it can never be so much. But uh, this is made by Eurostat and by some Estonian uh, organizations, and yeah. So I don't know, but but even if it would be five percent or ten percent, I mean it's it's still. A big amount of food, in fact, which which is being thrown away. So, okay. And question here. Um, I'm not sure if it's a question or a comment, but concerning the total food waste, uh, I'm also a bit unsure if it includes stuff like vegetable peels and. Possibly, if you make out of oats, for example, oat flakes, if the kind of rest of the oat is then in total food waste, so it's uh, that might explain why the number is so big that it actually contains stuff which is like vegetable peels and now in, in, his, in his, I think you should uh, look up all this report. It's very easy to find on the internet, yeah. uh, and it's it's a very good study, but um, it's very. I don't, I don't know exactly, but it's also explained what, what is waste of food. If you have uh, the, the bones of uh, an animal, is it food waste or is it just waste? So I think they made a distinction between food waste and just waste. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, yeah, over there. Uh, just a quick comment. Uh, EU has a renewable energy targets uh, set for 2020 and uh, one of the raw materials that uh, that is being encouraged to use as a, as an energy source is uh, waste and um, so just to uh, something to keep an eye on because at the moment companies have to pay to get rid of the food waste but it might soon turn out that they can make a profit by by selling it to someone who can make a fuel so that people can drive cars. Uh, yeah, but probably it would also always cost more to, to produce the food than you can get back. And I think in, in Tallinn there was already a fight about waste. There are some uh, energy production plants in, in Tallinn and they, they use uh, waste and they already now in fact are fighting for the waste because they they already found out that waste can be very valuable. Yeah? Actually, I have I have a comment. Sit down. Yeah, yes. I have a comment on that because, uh, in terms of environmental impacts, uh, if you are if you are uh, starting to use food waste for for energy production, we have we have been. Uh, uh, calculating that against uh, biogas production from from uh, from food waste, and actually you can you can can kind of correct or save 10% of the of the environmental impacts if you uh, if you sort and if you if you use the food waste for for energy production. I mean, uh, that's the value of what you can uh, uh, what you get uh, how much you get energy compared to what you should use a uh, fossil fuel for energy. 90% uh, uh, is, is uh, you can't substitute or you can't cover that, that uh, loss or that impact of environmental impact. So it is, it's very little what you actually can, can help the situation. 90% of the, of the uh, environmental impacts will stay in, uncovered. Only 10% would be. Okay, thank you. And thank you for a very interesting presentation.